We took this goldfish and put him into 3% alcohol solution. He died in 40 minutes. We then put him into uh, pure alcohol to preserve him as a specimen. And within a very few minutes, the gold dissolved in the fish and ran out into the alcohol, leaving the fish as white as a piece of note paper. This goldfish is not the first poor fish that has lost his gold when he took to alcohol. <laughs> Marijuana alters your perception of reality. It does uh, create a condition within the mind where the ideas move very uh, fluidly and without interrelation one to the other. It distorts your perception of reality. It may in high doses cause hallucinations, ideas of death. It may depress the individual so that uh, for example, one congressman reported a classmate of mine, try, of his rather, tried marijuana and committed suicide. These are people breaking the law. For 14 years, from 1919 to 1933, the great majority of Americans protested against prohibition. They deliberately broke the law which said no person shall manufacture, sell, barter, transport, import, export, deliver, furnish, or possess intoxicating liquors. The rum runners poured barrel after barrel into our Atlantic seaboard ports from such island outposts as Havana and Nassau. Only an occasional arrest was made. When federal agents destroyed an Al Capone brewery in Chicago, the notorious gangster complained of the double standard. When I sell liquor, he said, it's bootlegging. When my patrons serve it on a silver tray, it's hospitality. Creative Americans made whiskey and everything from spittoons to fire extinguishers, while the prohibitionists led by evangelist Billy Sunday fought to save the noble experiment from repeal. The saloons are dead as an Egyptian mummy. She's too dead to skin. But her ghost hangs like a moral paralysis over our land. But no man, woman, or child alive today will ever live to see the stars and stripes wave over an open license saloon in the United States from end of America. When I was a farmer boy of only 16, I went into an old saloon where you couldn't go legally unless you were 21. And I took this hand and passed the money across the counter of that saloon in Marietta, Georgia, and bought the rye liquor that sent me staggering home on my mother's broken heart. My dear young girl, the young man who seeks to have you take a drink does not do it because he loves you. He has some other motive. My dear boy, do you want your sister to yield to such temptation or be led astray. Ethyl alcohol has two characteristic actions. It's a solvent and a dehydrant. These two actions are safe and useful on inanimate substances outside the body. But these same two actions are the cause of injury on living tissue when taken into the body in the form of beer, ale, wine, cider, rum, whiskey, gin, or brandy. You're the enemy of every law of God and man. In the name of 28 million schoolboys and girls, I smash that above your head. Alcohol is a deadly, double, narcotic, irritant brain poison. It clogs the liver, it rots the kidneys, it inflames the stomach, it hardens the arteries, it weakens the heart, it softens the brain, it lowers the defensive power of the white blood corpus. It decreases the oxygen-absorbing and oxygen-carrying power of the red blood corpuscles. It's just as truly a habit-forming poison as morphine or cocaine. And if you drink enough of it, it will give you a green brain and a red nose and a white liver and a black heart and put a yellow streak clear through you. If I were president of the United States, 
I would do with this prohibition question like Teddy Roosevelt did with every question he tackled. I'd use a big stick on a big job in a big way. They say, well, people don't obey it, we'll repeal it. All right, then repeal the Ten Commandments. They don't obey them. And yet no law on the statute books is enforced 100% and you know it. The distillery on the hillside now is still, and the men, they take their tipple from the ripple of the rill. The boys, they go home sober, and Ma, she don't cry. Glory, hallelujah, Uncle Sam will stay dry. This convention wants repeal. The Democratic Convention in 1932. Your candidate wants repeal. Franklin Delano Roosevelt called for repeal of the 18th Amendment. And I am confident that the United States of America wants repeal. A cold glass of beer sounded mighty refreshing in the midst of the Great Depression. This is more than a political campaign. It is a call to arms. Give me your help not to win folks alone, but to win in this crusade to restore America to its own people. Franklin Roosevelt's landslide victory in the November election gave Congress ample reason to act. A resolution was quickly approved, providing for an amendment calling for the repeal of prohibition. Repeal ended the first experiment to write moral legislation into the law of the land. It also brought to a close a dangerous period of crime and violence. When America looked back, few could understand how prohibition had ever been allowed to happen in 1919. Comedian Will Rogers explained it. If you think this country ain't dry, he said, just watch them vote. If you think this country ain't wet, just watch them drink. You see, Will explained, when they vote, it's counted. But when they drink, it ain't. Today, marijuana, LSD, speed, and many other drugs are used by a segment of the public who rationalize the illegality in the same schizophrenic or double standard way many Americans did during the 14 years of prohibition. Are the comparisons valid? Are the dangers the same? Should the public have the right to decide? Hearings are held in Washington in an attempt to find answers to difficult questions. Last year in California alone, marijuana arrests of young people under 18 years of age increased 180 percent. Yes, sir, because there's more clandestine manufacture there, also more opportunity for illegal importation of the drug across the borders of the uh, north and the south. But there's a great element of danger in the secret use or abuse of these drugs. We are currently observing an increase in the presence and usage of the drug known as speed which is methamphetamine, a stimulant drug which can be taken either by injection or orally. Even in the hippie communities, the word is out, speed kills. The truth is we are ignorant regarding the actual amount of drug abuse in this country. It's a very difficult fact to ascertain. We have to be very careful when we talk about use to define use and not throw together the young person who has tried any of these drugs once in, in the spirit of adventure, in the spirit of seeking, in the spirit of uh, wanting to know what it's all about, with, those re with that relatively small group which has made drug use an important part of their lives. I think it's not a crucial difference whether 15% of our college students use marijuana or LSD or whether it's only 6% as uh, has been reported by different investigators. It seems to me the problem would require a solution if it were just 1% or less, and I'm sure you agree. 
as I understand the uh, legislation itself, uh, LSD will be a misdemeanor. Marijuana is 10 years, which, of course, is a felony. Two to 10, as Two I understand it, well, with discretion provided. It is a felony. So you have, even though the marijuana, from your own testimony, is, is certainly less dangerous, you have a more severe penalty than you'd have for LSD, which is uh, considerably more dangerous. And then what we're asking is for the young people to try and comply with uh, this kind of uh, uh, legislative uh, jumble and expect, uh, and expect them to uh, show some respect for the law. Let me put it this way. There are always a group of people in society who, if there is not a law, will carry out a certain act. But when a law does exist, they will not engage in that act. So it's with that portion of society that the law may have the greatest impact. There are many young people in our colleges who do not use drugs, who do not intend to use drugs, who do not approve of drug use, who still defend the right of other young people to use drugs. At the same time, we must consider the changing attitudes among our young people particularly, who regard drug use, particularly marijuana use, with alarming tolerance. Alcohol is our most widely used drug. In every pharmacological and medical sense, it is a drug. But most people prefer to call it a beverage and do not include it in their definition of drug or of dangerous drug. We haven't been successful in eliminating the abuse of alcohol as in our society. This continues to be a problem. Uh, and so we have to proceed uh, with the understanding that this is less than a perfect world. Every drug, and I'm talking now about alcohol, about nicotine, about caffeine, about medical drugs, all kinds of drugs, are potentially dangerous drugs. And I think this is the message that we must get to our young people. The problem must be viewed in the foreboding spectrum of things to come if we fail to deal effectively with it now. But I would like also to point out mm -hmm. that if you think that the use of marijuana is purely a phenomenon of the college student, I think you are making a very great mistake. Marijuana, once a drug primarily used by low-income groups, is today available in the affluent suburbs, in colleges, in high schools, and in the military. Estimates on users in the United States range as high as 20 million. In Great Neck, New York, a well-to-do community with an outstanding school system, students comment on their exposure to the drug problem. I think it all stems from the home. And at a home, at a poor home, it's the problems that confront them. I think that uh, what the school tries to do is good, but uh, it can only pick up where the parents leave off. I think they probably start because of a basic insecurity. Um, they don't know what they want. They try and escape reality so that they don't have to think about what is going to come in the future. And so they start taking drugs. People who are not able to adjust to school life, to community life, I think these are the people who go to narcotics, I think that it definitely is, is a result of, a, uh, of this type of personality uh, rather than our uh, uh, active people who fit in very well in, in our community. Well, they have to escape from the reality from the world that they live in and find a reality that they're happy in. What I found startling was the accessibility of drugs in Great Neck. Almost a quarter of the students in the school had seen people using drugs or had been able to purchase drugs at one time. This is the part of the poll which I found most surprising. People do have a tendency, once they hear about narcotics and dope, to blow it out of proportion. I don't think it's fair to great now. Well, many of them are, are kind of bored with, with, with life at this point. Um, although I've been told that many adolescents of our age are bored with life at this point, um, I just think they take it for kicks. Today, a young person with a narcotics conviction, regardless of his background, will find it difficult to enter teaching, law, or to gain employment in many industries. A young person who broke the law during the 14 years of prohibition was with the majority and in the main went unpunished. Protest is being heard today on both sides of the question. Should drug use be legalized or should the penalties for its use be made more severe? <laughs>